Welcome to the third nutrition lesson brought to you by the University of Arizona FNEP team in Pima County. My name is Paula Gonzalez and I will be talking today about the protein group. During lesson two, we reviewed the grain food group of my plate. The first takeaway message is to eat a variety of grains throughout your day, including foods made from corn, rice, oats, and wheat, and many other types of grains. If you have gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, you can opt for gluten-free grains like corn, rice, and oats, and quinoa, among others. Avoid foods made with wheat, barley, and rye. Check labels to ensure they are gluten-free. The second takeaway message is to eat a portion size that is right for you. The average amount is six ounces daily for people who do less than 30 minutes of physical activity per day outside of their normal activities. Eating too much can lead to weight gain, and too little, we may miss out on important nutrients that help us feel energized and that are also good for our digestion, heart health, nervous system, and other important functions of our body. This leads us to our third takeaway message, eat whole grains. Whole grains contain nutrients such as fiber, carbohydrates, protein, B vitamins, and iron. Refined grains, since they don't have the bran and the germ, mostly contain carbohydrates, and we lose out on a lot of nutrients our body needs. So if possible, remember, make half of your grains whole grains throughout your day. This week, we will focus on the protein group. Before we talk about protein foods, we will talk about what a protein is. There are so many different types of proteins in our body. This image on the left is a representation of what one protein might look like if we could see it with our bare eyes. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Proteins are made up of smaller pieces called amino acids, which are arranged in different ways to get all of these different types of proteins. It can get a little confusing, I get it. Think of it this way. These toy building blocks can come in many colors, shapes, and sizes. So these would be the amino acids. These building blocks or amino acids can be put together in a lot of ways to make a protein. Proteins have many functions in the body, including serving as the building blocks for our bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, and blood. Our body takes protein from the foods that we eat, breaks them down into amino acids, and uses them to make new proteins that help build or repair our body. Now that you know what a protein is, what kinds of foods do you picture that may contain protein? Maybe you might picture food products that come from animals, and you might be right. If you're a little bit more familiar with nutrition, you might also think of some plant foods that contain lots of protein, and that's good too. Today, we will take a look at both animal and plant protein foods, as well as the portions that we should eat. A lot of food that comes from animals has a lot of protein. Here we can see beef, chicken, fish, eggs, and milk, or milk products like yogurt and cheese. Proteins can also be obtained from foods that come from plants, such as nuts, Think walnuts, pistachios, cashews, almonds, seeds like sunflower and sesame seeds, beans of all kinds and colors, and many types of peas. Since some people follow vegetarian or vegan diets, it is important to mention complete proteins. Remember the amino acids we mentioned at the beginning? You know, the toy building blocks? Well, there are actually 20 amino acids our body needs. Out of these 20, only nine can be obtained from the foods that we eat, while the rest can be produced in our body. These nine amino acids are what we call essential amino acids. If proteins contain all of these nine amino acids, we consider that a complete protein. Some of these essential amino acids are not available in the plant protein foods we just mentioned. In order to get all the amino acids from plant foods, you should also eat whole grains. If you are a vegetarian, you can obtain these essential amino acids from eggs, milk, and cheese. If you follow a strictly plant diet, eat lots of plant protein foods and whole grain foods. So
So how many animal and or plant proteins should we have every day? Think about my plate. What do you think? If you took a look at my plate, you can see that grains and protein are about the same amount. On average, we can have about five or six ounces of protein every day. Look at this table to see what amount is right for you. And like always, it is important to note that these amounts on the table are appropriate for individuals who get less than 30 minutes per day of moderate physical activity. And of course, portions depend on your age and gender as well. It is also important to consider that people with certain health conditions may have to consume less or more protein. Talk to your doctor or healthcare provider to know what is right for you. So what do ounces of protein look like? When it comes to cuts of meats like lean beef, chicken, pork, and fish that are the size of your palm, they tend to be about two to three ounces. Some portions might weigh more than others, but looking at your own palm will give you a pretty good idea of how many servings you are having. When it comes to canned tuna or chicken, if it's strained, it tends to be about three to four ounces. When it comes to eggs, one egg equals one ounce. And if you only eat the egg whites, two egg whites equal one ounce. Nuts and seeds are packed with protein. As a result, half an ounce of nuts and seeds equals one ounce of protein. So what would half an ounce look like? It would be about 12 almonds, 24 pistachios, seven walnut halves. Or a good way to think about it is a small handful of nuts or seeds. Two tablespoons of nut butters like peanut butter or even almond butter equals one ounce of protein. For beans and peas that are cooked, baked, or roasted, one fourth cup equals one ounce. When beans or peas are blended, for example, when chickpeas are made into hummus, two tablespoons equals one ounce. As you have seen, you can get protein from both animal and plant foods. It also doesn't take big portions to fulfill your protein needs. For example, if you need six ounces of protein every day, you can eat one egg for breakfast, a piece of toast with peanut butter as a snack, and a piece of baked chicken about the size of your palm for lunch, and also a handful of nuts with dried fruit as a treat. Protein foods don't only contain proteins, they also have a lot of other nutrients. Both animal and plant protein foods have an array of nutrients. While most of the nutrients on this slide are beneficial for our health, others can hurt our health if consumed in high amounts. And I will summarize each of these. We'll begin with animal foods. In animal foods, we can find fats, which are a source of energy, as well as cholesterol. Only animal foods contain cholesterol. Now cholesterol is necessary for our body to make things like hormones, but if consumed in high amounts, it can cause heart disease. Watch our video titled Nutrition and Heart Disease to learn more about this topic. Fish contain omega-3 fatty acids, which can actually help fight heart disease, and it also supports other body functions like the immune and endocrine system. There are also nutrients that can be found in both animal and plant foods, which are in the middle column. B vitamins help obtain energy from the foods that we eat. Vitamin E is important for healthy vision, skin, your blood, and your brain. Iron helps prevent anemia. Zinc supports the immune system and helps fight off infections. Magnesium helps build strong bones and supports muscle function. When it comes to plant foods, we have fiber. And as we have reviewed in previous lessons, fiber can be good for our digestive system and our heart health. There are also a lot of healthy fats in plant foods, which give us energy, and a lot of other vitamins and minerals. These are not the only nutrients that we can find in these foods, but it's a good way to start thinking of how different foods help our body, as well as how different nutrients can hurt our body. In addition to minding your portion sizes and knowing that different protein foods have different nutrients, it is important to vary your protein routine. That means if you're used to eating one type of protein, let's say hamburger, replace some of your meals with other proteins like fish or plant proteins like beans. If you only eat one type of protein, you won't get all the necessary nutrients your body needs. 
ChooseMyPlate.gov has many great tips of how to vary your proteins. You can access info sheets, activities, and other great resources through the website. You can also contact us and we can send you our favorite resources. When choosing your daily protein foods, it is important to choose those that are low in fat, especially in trans and saturated fat. While fats get a bad reputation, our body also needs fat. As we have mentioned before, fats are a source of energy. They also help protect our organs and keep our body warm. In addition, some nutrients are better absorbed in the presence of fat. There are four major dietary fats, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated, and trans fat. And of course, foods obtained from animals also contain cholesterol. Perhaps you have seen these on the packaging of foods or listed in the nutrition label, like in the picture on the right. Maybe you have also heard about limiting the amount you eat, especially of certain types of fats like saturated and trans fat. And there's a really good reason for it. We will explore what types of foods contain these fats and how they impact our health. We will begin with the highlights for monounsaturated fat. This type of fat is healthier in comparison to saturated and trans fats, and you will usually find it as an oil that is liquid at room temperature. It is good in that it helps reduce bad cholesterol levels, which is really good for our heart health. And they are also rich in vitamin E. Also, these oils are usually found in plant foods. It is recommended to cook and eat foods with olive, canola, peanut, safflower, and sesame oil. Other sources of this type of fat include avocados, peanut butter, and many nuts and seeds. Next, we have polyunsaturated fats, which are very similar to monounsaturated. This fat is also healthy, liquid at room temperature, lowers fat cholesterol, and contains vitamin E. In addition, this fat contains omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, which also support heart health. A lot of foods contain this fat but you can especially find them in soybean, corn, and sunflower oil, in a lot of nuts like walnuts, and seeds like sunflower, pumpkin, and chia. It is also found in tofu, and in fish like salmon, herring, mackerel, and sardines. Saturated fats are not so good for our health, and we should try to eat foods with less of these fats. Saturated fats raise our levels of bad cholesterol, which increase our risk for heart disease and stroke. These can be mostly found in foods that come from animals, but can also be found in processed foods and baked goods. That's why it's important to read the nutrition label. If eating foods with saturated fat, remember to choose lean cuts of beef, lamb, pork, and chicken. For example, you can choose 92% lean ground beef when making homemade meatloaf or meatballs. Also choose low fat or fat free versions of creams, cheese, and milk. And limit the amount of butter you cook with and choose healthier cooking oils. Last but not least, we have trans fats. Like saturated fats, these are not so good for our health since they also raise bad cholesterol levels, which can lead to heart disease, stroke, and type two diabetes. This type of fat was created in an industrial process and is more shelf stable meaning that foods made with this fat don't go bad as quickly compared to other fats. Therefore, we can mainly find this fat in highly processed foods. In some nutrition labels, you will see this listed as partially hydrogenated oils. This type of fat can be found in donuts, cakes, cookies, frozen pizza, margarine and other spreads, and in a lot of fried foods, especially fast foods. Therefore, we should limit these type of foods and enjoy them once in a while. Overall, choose lean protein and eat more plant-based protein foods and fats. If you want to learn more or have any questions, visit choosemyplate.gov or email us at communitynutrition.uofa.gmail.com and you can also contact us through our Facebook, facebook.com forward slash communitynutrition.uofa. There we post a lot of information every week. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pima Community Nutrition Education, FNEP, 
and click the notification bell icon to know every time we post a new video. Once again, thank you for tuning in today. We hope to see you for the next lesson.